Good day everyone, we are the fourth year BPED students from Nueva Ecija University of Science and Technology. This video is part of our requirement, particularly in the SDS subject, which is Science, Technology, and Society. For today's video presentation, we will be going to discuss the topic which is entitled the Nano World. But before we start, let me introduce first myself. I'm Charmaine Bifetti, your first presenter. Before we start to our main topic, let us have first an overview. Many things have changed in our society nowadays. Modern technologies continuously arise globally, particularly the use of nanotechnology. People are not aware that this technology is already being used in their everyday lives. Nanoscale materials have been used for decades in applications ranging from window glass and sunglasses to car bumpers and paints. Now, however, the convergence of scientific disciplines such as chemistry, biology, electronics, physics, engineering, and many more is leading to a multiplication of applications in materials manufacturing, computer chips, medical diagnosis and healthcare, energy, biotechnology, space exploration, security, and so on and so forth. Hence, nanotechnology is expected to have a significant impact on our economy and society within the 10 to 15 years. And before we continue to our main topic, let's talk about first the learning objectives. First objective is explain the concept of nanotechnology. Second, discuss the applications of nanotechnology. And third and last objective is discuss the major impacts, both potential and realized, of nanotechnology on society. So, nanotechnology. Nanoscience is the study of phenomena and manipulation of materials at atomic, molecular, and macromolecular scales in order to understand and exploit properties that differ significantly from those on a larger scale. Nanotechnologies are the design, characterization, production, and application of structures, devices, and systems by controlling shape and size on a nanometer scale. In other words, nanotechnology is a technology that manipulate and control a substance or substances at the nanometer level and create new materials and devices with fascinating functions making the best use of the special properties of nano-sized substances. So, the nanometer level is the level of atoms and molecules in a substance. A 1 nanometer is equivalent to 1,000 million of a meter. As for a single human hair is about 80,000 nanometer wide, as for red blood cell is approximately 7,000 nanometer wide, a DNA molecule 2 to 2.5 nanometer, and a water molecule almost 0.3 nanometer. The term nanotechnology was created by Norio Taniguchi, who was a professor in Tokyo University, in year 1974, to describe the precision manufacture of materials with nanometer tolerances. But its origins date back to Richard Feynman's 1959 talk, There's Plenty of Room at the Bottom, in which he proposed the direct manipulation of individual atoms as a more favorable form of synthetic chemistry. Modern industrial nanotechnology had its origins in the year 1930s in processes used to create silver coatings for photographic films. And chemists have been making polymers, which are large molecules made up of nanoscale subunits for many decades. However, the earliest known use of nanoparticles is in the 9th century during the Abbasid dynasty. Arab potters use nanoparticles on their glazes so that objects would change color depending on the viewing angle, and that is so-called polychrome luster. The properties of materials can be different on a nanoscale for two main reasons. First, nanomaterials have relatively a larger surface area than the same mass of material produced in a larger form. This can make materials more chemically reactive and affect their strength or electrical properties. Second, below 50 nanometer, the laws of classical physics give way to quantum effects, provoking optical, electrical, and magnetic behaviors different from those of the same material at a larger scale. 
This effect can give materials very useful physical properties such as exceptional electrical conduction or resistance or a high capacity for storing or transferring heat and can even modify biological properties with silver. One example of nanotechnology is computers. Without nanotechnology, we wouldn't have many of the electronics we use in our everyday life. Intel is undoubtedly a leader in tiny computer processors, and the latest generation of Intel's core processor technology is a 10 nanometer chip. Good day everyone, I am Rogeline V. Gargassin from BPED for c and to continue the discussion, I will present the three of the most talked about nanotechnology. First is the carbon nanotubes. Carbon nanotube, often referred to a single wall carbon nanotubes with diameter in the range of nanometer. A single wall carbon nanotubes are one of the allotropes of carbon, intermediate between fuller in cage and flat graphene. A single wall carbon nanotubes theoretically possesses ultimate intrinsic tensile strength in 100 to 200 GPA range, among the highest in existing materials. Here are some of the proposed uses for a carbon nanotubes. First is in chemical and genetic probes. A nanotube dipped atomic force microscope can trace a strand of DNA and identify chemical markers that reveal which of several possible variants of a gene is present in the strand. This is very applicable in today's situation. Why? Kasi makakatulong ito to detect and study more of about the variants or different variants of COVID-19. Next is in field emission based devices. A carbon nanotubes have been demonstrated to be efficient field emitters and are currently being incorporated in several applications including flat panel display for television sets or computers or any devices requiring an electron producing cathode such as x-ray sources or for medical applications. Another proposed use of carbon nanotube is supersensitive sensors. A semiconducting nanotubes change their electric resistance dramatically when exposed to alkalis, halogens, and other gases at room temperature, raising hopes for better chemical sensors. The sensitivity of this device is 1,000 times that of strand solid-state devices. Next is sharper scanning microscope. Attached to the tip of scanning probe, microscope nanotubes can boost the instrument lateral resolution by a factor of 10 or more allowing clearer views of proteins and other large molecules. And lastly, super strong materials. When embedded into a composite, nanotubes have enormous resilience and tensile strength and could be used to make materials with better safety features such as car with panels that absorb significantly more of force of a collision rather than materials or girders that bend rather than rupture in an earthquake. Well, nanotubes still cost 10 to 1,000 times more than the carbon fibers currently used in composite. Uh, this also used in some of uh, yung mga car na uh, bulletproof na nauuso na ngayon. The second of the most talked about nanotechnology is the nanoparticle. Nanoparticle is a small particle that ranges between 1 to 100 nanometer in size. The definition given by the European Commission states that the particle size of at least half of the particles in the number size distribution must measure 100 nanometer or below. Most nanoparticles are made up of a few hundred atoms. Nanoparticles are now being used in the manufacture of scratch-proof eyeglasses, crack-resistant paint, anti-graffiti coatings for walls, transparent sunscreens, uh, stain-repellent fabrics, soap-cleaning windows, and ceramic coatings for solar cells. Mas nakakatulong daw yung uh, nanoparticles na mapatibay yung mga bagay katulad ng mga nabanggit. 
The third of the most talked about nanotechnology is a quantum dot. A quantum dot is a nanometer-sized semiconductor particles traditionally with a core shell structure, as you can see in the picture. Quantum dots are widely used for their unique optical properties as they emit light of a specific wavelength if energy is applied to them. A quantum dot are particularly significant for optical application, owing to their bright pure colors along with their ability to emit rainbow of colors coupled with their high efficiency, longer lifetime, and high extinction coefficient. Examples are uh, light emitting diodes or LED and solid state lightning displays and photovoltaics. Ito rin yung nakikita natin kapag kumuha tayo ng halimbawa cellphone or calculator kapag pinigan natin yung screen ay makikita tayong rainbow. That is a example of quantum dot. That would wrap up my discussion. Please listen to the next reporter. Thank you. Good day everyone, I'm Riel Giodones and today I will discuss to you the some of the uses of nanotechnologies in consumer product. Number one, a glass for windows which is coated with titanium oxide, a nanoparticles that react to sunlight to break down dirt. When water hits the glass, it spreads evenly over the surface instead of forming droplets and runs off rapidly taking the dirt with it. The second one is the nanotechnologies are used by the car industry to reinforce certain properties of car bumpers and to uh, improve the adhesive properties of paints. So when we say uh, reinforcement, reinforcement means strengthen or support a uh, certain properties or institution. The third one is sunglasses using protective and anti-reflective ultra-thin polymer coatings. And nanotechnology also offers scratch-resistant coatings based on uh, nanocomposites that are transparent, ultra-thin, simple to care for, well-suited for daily use, and reasonably priced. Okay? A nanocomposites can be classified into ceramic, metal, and uh, polymer, and they can be used in cars, electronic, and electric electrical components, food packaging, cosmetics, and environment. The next one is the te textiles can incorporate nanotechnology to make practical improvements to such properties as windproofing and waterproofing, preventing wrinkling or um, staining and guarding against electrostatic discharges. The windproof and waterproof properties of one sky jacket, for example, are obtained not by a surface coating of the jacket but by the use of nanofibers. So maybe some of you are asking what is nanofibers? Okay, nanofibers is a tiny particle that your naked eyes can't afford to see. Fiber lead each other, resulting in a nanofiber mat. For example, face masks, tissues, and wipes, and etc. Okay, number five, sports equipment manufacturers are also turning to nanotech, a high-performance skywalk which produces a hard and fast gliding surface is already in use. The ultra-thin coating lasts longer than conventional waxing systems. Tennis rackets with carbon nanotubes have increased torsion and flex resistance. The rockets are more rigid than current carbon rockets and pack more power. Long-lasting tennis balls are made by coating the inner core with the clay polymer nanocomposites and have twice the lifetime of conventional balls. Okay, 
It shows that nanotech has a contribution to our sports that some of us didn't notice at all, especially in the field of physical education, okay? And now we already knew that there's a nanotech in sports. Number six is sunscreens, sunscreens and cosmetics based on nanotech are already widely used. Cons customers like products that are translucent because they suggest purity and cleanliness and L'Oreal discovered that when lotions are ground down to 50 or 60 nanometers, they, they let light through. For sunscreens, mineral man, nanoparticles such as titanium dioxide offer several advantages. Titanium dioxide nanoparticles have a uh, comparable UV protection property as the bulk material, but lose the cosmetically undesirable whitening as the particle size in de is decreased. For anti-wrinkle creams, a polymer capsule is used to transport active agents like vitamins. Okay, the uh, nanoparticles of a cosmetics shows uh, incredible goodness and purity. It shows that even in our daily life, uh, nanotech is already existed. Okay, and the number seven is the televisions using carbon nanotubes could be in use by late 2006 according to Samsung 16. Manufacturers expect this field effect displays or FED to consume less energy than plasma or liquid crystal display or also known as LCD. Sets and combine the thinness of LCD and the image quality of traditional cathode ray tubes or CRT. Okay, as you see, television is a kind of technology that gives information and entertainment to, to the people. Okay, so the outstanding display in a television is carried through carbon nanotubes. And carbon nanotubes is a particles of a nanotechnology. Okay, once again, I'm Rel Yodones and that is the use of nanotechnology. That would be all. Thank you. Good day everyone. I am Rachel P. Stanislaw, the fourth reporter. Some of the foreseen applications of nanotechnology in the medium term. The following list gives a quick overview of many domains where nanotechnology is expected to fundamentally change products and how they are produced over the next two decades. Electronics and Communications Recording using nanolayers and dots, flat panel displays, wireless technology, new devices, and processes across the entire range of communication and information technologies, factors of thousands to millions of improvements in both data range capacity and processing speeds at a lower cost and improved power efficiency compared to present electronic circuits. Chemicals and Materials Catalysts that increase the energy efficiency of chemical plants and improve the combustion efficiency of motor vehicles, super hardened tow, drill bits, and cutting tools, smart magnetic fluids for vacuum seals and lubricants, pharmaceuticals, healthcare, and life science. Nanostructured drugs, gene and drug delivery systems targeted to specific sites in the body, biocompatible replacement for body parts and fluids. Self-diagnostics for use in the home, sensors for lab on a chip, material for bone and tissue regeneration. Manufacturing, precision engineering based on new generations of Microsofts and measuring techniques, new processes and tools to manipulate matter at an atomic level, nanopowders that are sintered into bulk materials with special properties that may include sensors to detect incipient failures and actuators to repair problems, Chemical mechanical polishing with nanoparticles, self assembling of structures from molecules, bio inspired materials, and biostructures. Energy technologies New types of batteries, artificial photosynthesis for clean energy, quantum well solar cells, 
safe storage of hydrogen for use as a clean fuel, energy savings from using lighter materials, and small circuits. Space exploration. Lightweight space vehicles, economic energy generation and management, ultra-small and capable robotic systems. Environment. Selective membranes that can filter contaminants or even salt from water, non-structured traps from removing pollutants from industrial influence, characterization of the effects of non-structures in the environment, maintenance of industrial sustainability by significant reduction in materials and energy use, reduced source of pollution, increased opportunities for recycling. National Security Detectors and detoxifiers of chemical and biological agents, dramatically more capable electronic circuits, hard non-structured coatings and materials, camouflage materials, light and self-repairing textiles, blood replacement, miniaturized surveillance systems. Good day everyone, this is Princess G. Gabriel and now let's proceed to the nanotechnology and the situation of developing countries. While research and development in nanotechnology is quietly limited in most developing countries, there will be increasing opportunities to import nanoproducts and processes. It can be argued, of course, that nanotechnology could make the situation of developing countries worse by reducing demand for their exports and notably raw materials. Moreover, even in developing countries, few nanotech projects specifically target the needs of the poor, leading to fears of a nanodivide similar to the digital divide. For developing countries, the top 10 nanotechnology applications are, first is the energy. Nanomaterials are being used to build a new generation of solar cells, hydrogen fuel cells, and novel hydrogen storage systems that could deliver clean energy to countries still reliant on traditional, non-reuable contaminating fuels. Advances in the creation of synthetic nanomembranes embedded with proteins are capable of turning light into chemical energy. If successfully developed on an industrial scale, such technologies could help developing countries avoid recurrent shortages and price fluctuations that come with dependence on fossil fuels, as well as the environmental consequences of mining and burning oil and coal. Next is agriculture. Researchers are developing a range of inexpensive nanotech applications to increase soil fertility and crop production and help eliminate malnutrition. A contributor to more than half the deaths of children under 5 in developing countries. Nanotech materials are in development for the slow release and efficient dosage of fertilizers for plants and of nutrients and medicines for livestock. Other agricultural developments include nanosensors to monitor the health of crops and farm animals and magnetic nanoparticles to remove soil contaminants. Number three is water treatment. Nanomembranes and nanoclays are inexpensive, portable, and easily cleaned systems that purify, detoxify, and desalinate water more efficiently than conventional bacterial and viral filters. Researchers also have developed a method of large-scale production of carbon nanotube filters for water quality improvement. Other water applications include systems based on titanium dioxide and on magnetic nanoparticles that decompose organic pollutants and remove salts and heavy metals from liquids, enabling the use of heavily contaminated and salt water for irrigation and drinking. Several of the contaminating substances retrieved could then be easily recycled. Number four, disease diagnosis and screening. Technologies include the lab on a chip, which offers all the diagnostic functions of a medical laboratory and other biosensors based on nanotubes, wires, 
magnetic particles, and semiconductor crystals or the quantum dots. These inexpensive handheld diagnostic kits detect the presence of several pathogens at once and could be used for wide range screening in small peripheral clinics. Other nanotechnology applications are in development that would greatly enhance medical imaging. Next is number 5, which is the drug delivery systems. Nanocapsules, then dreamers, or the tiny bus-like spheres made of branch polymers, and buckyballs or the soccer ball-shaped structures made of 60 carbon atoms for slow, sustained drug release systems, characteristics valuable for countries without adequate drug storage capabilities, and distribution networks. Nanotechnology could also potentially reduce transportation costs and even require dosages by improving shelf life, thermostability, and resistance to changes in humidity of existing medications. Number six, food processing and storage. Improved plastic film coatings for food packaging and storage may enable a wider and more efficient distribution of food products to remote areas in less industrialized countries. Antimicrobial emulsions made with nanomaterials for the decontamination of food equipment, packaging, or food, and nanotech-based sensors to detect and identify contamination. And next, number seven, air pollution remediation. Nanotech-based innovations that destroy air pollutants with light, make catalytic converters more efficient, cheaper and better controlled, detect toxic materials and leaks, and reduce fossil fuel emissions and separate gases. Next is number eight, which is construction. Nanomolecular structures to make asphalt and concrete more resistant to water. Materials to block ultraviolet and infrared radiation. Materials for cheaper and durable housing, surfaces, coatings, glues, concrete, and heat and light exclusion. And self-cleaning for windows, mirrors, and toilets. For number 9, health monitoring. Nano devices are being developed to keep track of daily changes in physiological variables such as the levels of glucose, of carbon dioxide, and of cholesterol without the need for drawing blood in a hospital setting. For example, patients suffering from diabetes would know at any given time the concentration of sugar in their blood. Similarly, patients with heart diseases would be able to monitor their cholesterol levels constantly. And lastly, number 10, disease vector and pest detection control. Nanoscale sensors for pest detection and improved pesticides, insecticides, and insect repellents. So, that would be all. Thank you. So now let's proceed to the next presenter. Good day everyone. My name is Jessamy Argamponya from BPED Porsi. So for today's video, I'm going to discuss the risk of nanotechnology and implication of nanotechnology in human life and environment. First is risk of nanotechnology. The emphasis on what kind of risk involved in nanotechnologies that need to be considered depends on the perspective of the particular organization. Business risk is involved with marketing of nanotechnology enabled products. A business risk increase with novel technologies, the ways cost customer and consumer perceive the benefits and safety of products affect whether companies successfully market new innovation and whether customer will want to buy them. 
Second is related to protection of intellectual property. Third is political risk regarding the impact on the economical development of countries and the regions. And environmental risk from release of nanoparticles into the environment. Uh, in free from nanoparticles can be released in the air or water during production or production accident and or a waste by product of production and ultimately accumulate in the soil, water, or plant life. Last is safety risk from nanoparticles for workers and consumers. So now let's move on to the implication of nanotechnology in human life and environment. A fair of assessment of the risk of new technology must also consider facetive contribution to increase safety. The basic innovation that come from nanotechnologies have the potential to contribute to human health and environmental safety in many ways. Uh, they have the potential to contribute to solve urgent issues like the provision of clean drinking water or more efficient energy conversion and energy storage. The potential of nanotechnologies regarding economic benefits is the potential to create jobs, wealth, and well-being is very high. And the economic growth in field of nanotechnologies will lead to increased variety and increased volumes of engineered nanoparticles that are produced, uh, keeping in mind that these pre nanoparticles can enter the human body over various pathways, inhalation, ingestion, or via the skin, or dispersed into the environment, it is important to understand the implication for human life and the ecosystem. And also, it is necessary to understand both uh, the hazard associated with nanomaterials and the levels of exposure that are likely to occur. In both areas, the existing knowledge is quite limited. It, it will be necessary to generate and establish new data in the future. That's all for today. Thank you for listening. Good day everyone, I'm Apulibet Ahermano from Bifed 4C. For today's video, I'm going to discuss the human health. Human health, I state complete physical, mental, and social well-being, not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. In the field of medicine, there are quite a few technological developments that promise enhanced diagnostic possibilities, new ways to monitor patients, new ways to treat diseases like cancer and reduce side effects. To give few examples, nanoparticles. Nanoparticles can be used as carriers for target drug delivery. Their ability to penetrate certain protective membranes in the body, such as the blood-brain barrier, can be beneficial for many drugs. This could open way for new drugs from active substances that have not been able to pass clinical trials due to less precise delivery mechanism. Uh, a nanoparticle is a small particle that ranges between 1 to 100 nanometers in size. Undetectable by human eye, nanoparticles can exhibit significantly different physical and chemical properties to their linear material counterparts. Most nanoparticles are made up of only a few hundred of atoms. The effects of inhaled nanoparticles in the body may include lung inflammation and heart problems. Studies in humans show that breathing in disease or diesel suit causes a general inflammatory response and alters the system that regulates the involuntary functions in the cardiovascular system such as color of heart rate. The second one is nanosensors and lab-on-chip technologies will foster early recognition and identification of diseases and can be used for continuous monitoring of patients with chronic disease or diseases. Some undesirable implication of non-technology to human. 
The nanosensors are used to identify accurately the cancerous cells in order to deliver the medicine or to monitor the change state of the cells in the cancerous site. The non-sensor application is used to me measure the cancer biomarkers in the whole blood in its early stage. Um, nanosensors typically work by monitoring electrical changes in the senses or in the sensor materials. For example, carbon nanotube-based sensors work in this way. When a molecule of nitrogen dioxide is present, it will strip an electron from the nanotube, which in turn causes the nanotube to less conductive. When bulk materials are made into nanoparticles, they tend to become chemically more reactive. They are very interesting as catalysis, even chemically inert materials like gold or platinum are able to catalyze chemical reactions in nanopowder form. Nanoparticles particles generally are more toxic when incorporated into the human body than larger particles of the same materials. Free nanoparticles or nanotubes could be inhaled, absorbed through the skin, or ingested. Inhaled particles can have two major effects on the human body. First, their primary toxic effect is to induce inflammation in the respiratory tract, causing tissue damage and subsequent systematic effects. And secondly, the transport of nanoparticles through the bloodstream to other vital organs or tissues of the body may result in cardiovascular and other extrapulmonary effects. If nanoparticles penetrate the skin, they may facilitate the production of reactive molecules that could lead to cell damage. So good day everyone, my name is Gabriel Aaron D. Houston from biped 3 c and I'll be reporting the environmental effects of um, nanotechnology. So the world is facing significant uh, environment challenges such as improving the quality of air, soil, and water. So currently, industry is uh, focusing on detecting pollutants from chemical spills, fertilizations, and pesticides runoff, improving industrial mining sites, treating contaminants, and stopping further pollutions. So nanotechnological products processes, processes the applications are expected to contribute significantly to environmental and climate protection by saving raw materials, energy, and water as well as by reducing greenhouse gases and hazardous waste. Using nanomaterials therefore promises certain environment benefits and sustainability effects. Note, however, that nanotechnology currently plays a rather subordinate role in, in environmental protection, whether it be in research or in practical applications. So environmental engineering companies themselves attach only limited importance to nanotechnology in their respective fields. So I have here the specific examples of nanotechnology applications that benefit the environment. <clears throat> so first, we have that nanotechnology can make battery recycling economy attractive and economically attractive. So many batteries still contains heavy materials such as mercury, lead, um, and nickel, which it can can contaminate the environment and pose a potential threat to human health. When batteries are improperly disposed of, not only to the billions upon billions of batteries in landfills pose an environmental environmental problems they can also uh, complete ways of a potential and cheap raw materials <clears throat> so second we have the nanotechnology based solutions for oil spills conventional cleanup techniques are not adequate to solve the problems of massive oil spills. In recent years, nanotechnology has emerged as a potential source of novel solutions to many of the world's outstanding problems. So although the application can nanotechnology um, for oils, oil spills cleanup in still in, in its nascent stage, it 
offers great promises uh, for the future. In the last couple of years, there has been a particularly growing interest worldwide in exploring ways of finding sus- uh, stable uh, solutions to clean up oils spills through use of nanomaterials. So lastly, we have the water applications. So the potential impact areas for nanotechnology in water applications are divided into three categories. So we have here the treatment and the remedi- remediations, sensing and detections, and pollution preventions. Thank you.